パンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパンパン Stop、I'm、it. a cop, you idiot! s <laughs> Stop it.、Uh, three alpha, take one. Welcome back to another episode no, no, of the no, Not So Round Table. Second stick. Second stick. There. Welcome back、go. to another episode of the Not So Round Table. We're abbreviating now to NSRT or insert. So feel free to insert your questions in the comments section below. You know how it works. George and I, and maybe a special guest sometimes,、uh, will answer questions out of our helm of reasoning, which is right here in front of us.、Uh, the helm of reasoning is full of questions that you guys submit in the comments section from the、uh, previous videos.、Uh, if we don't get to your question, don't worry. It doesn't get thrown out. It stays in the helmet, which is why we're actually kind of stacking up on questions a little bit. You guys are asking questions faster than we can answer them in our 20 to 30 minute time. Time frame. We're gonna try to answer more questions. I don't have、today. any. I don't know、today. why he's so hopped up on energy.、Today. I don't know, man. I had a lot of sleep. Are、oh, you gonna answer a question? You didn't have a lot of、I、sleep. I didn't. So you、I、came、didn't. in and you're like, hey, I'm so、guys. tired. I'm so tired. Like, why are you tired? Like,、oh, yeah, yeah. that's fine. I'll answer a question or ask a question, and then you can answer it. All right, let's move on. Move on. Cole Bradley asks, with a grenade launcher, would it be better to use projectiles or a BB shower? Projectiles. I think it depends on the intended. Okay, it, it depends on the use. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, If you're attacking vehicles, obviously a BB shower doesn't、pointless. count as a kill. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if you're in a close quarters environment or you're co- coming around corners and you're using it as like a shotgun blast, then of course a BB shower. That's a lot. Shooting of- a football at somebody is not the most、uh, effective, especially when you're trying to hit. Like if you're trying to hit multiple targets, you know, no one always,、uh, everyone doesn't always honor the kill radius of a football. Am I right? Yeah. So, so maybe a BB shower would be more effective if you're trying to kill multiple assailants all at the same time and make sure they feel it. If you're going from a realism standpoint, then the projectile is definitely more realistic. That's true. But you know what? Considering that I have done this before, I have run just a standalone, M2, standalone M203 with the stock with a little EOTech on there, and I just ran that, nothing but that, and, and just shells, shells, and just ran around playing CQB. No AEG, no pistol, nothing, and that is a lot of fun. Well, plus, if you go BB showers, you don't have to run around picking up footballs and Nerf balls after you're done. And there's there's nothing cooler than blasting <laughs> off one of those M, one of those Mad Bull shells with CO2 float with BBs. You're just like, boom, and you hit like a bunch of people across、mm-hmm. the room. You're like, yeah.、Mm-hmm. And then you get lit up by a guy shooting three rounds a second. So both. And you don't complain. And neither. Both of them at the same time. Put some BB shower behind your projectile, get a blossom effect. And get good, get, invest in, if you're going to get BB shell stuff, invest in good shells. Yes. The shells do make it. There's huge nothing、difference. worse than coming around a corner, ready to pull the trigger, and have your、uh, shell not fire. Or even or, where it just goes boop and it goes boop. <laughs> <laughs> Performance anxiety. What is that? Premature. Never mind. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's、uh, grab another question,、oh. George. Please, quickly, before it gets awkward. Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> What's awkward already? <laughs> This is from Kyler Valen. How many people do you need to start an airsoft team?、Uh, relative. That's, I mean, a relative. Just one. I think, I, <laughs> I think maybe a good starting point is between four and eight. I don't think you need to go greater than. 15 max. I would start with like your, your typical quarter, element of yeah, a squad yeah. size. So yeah, between maybe, five and ten. Yeah, five and ten is a good number, or four and eight. I did four and eight because、okay. that way you have an even number. I was just changing but, the number, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. But、uh, I think anything more than 20. The more people little, you have, the more difficult it becomes to schedule everybody to meet up at the same time. It's not that. It's also hard, it's harder to control people a little bit. True. If you have、uh, leadership in mind or if you have some members that are maybe disruptive, it's kind of harder to control them. Yeah, don't put me on your team. I'm very disruptive. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't pointing at you. No, it's cool, man. It's cool. Matt's not on my team, so it's okay. Four, four to eight, says four. George. And that's a good starting point, I'd say. Three would be just kind of three. All you、buttons. need. Yeah, yeah, three would be kind of awkward. Look, if you want to start a team, just order some patches. Team. <laughs> All right. Get 100 patches. Dude. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay.、Uh, this one's by Reaper GM15. Dear Evic, not to round table. Dear Evic, insert. How does it feel to be icons in the airsoft world, and how does it feel being asked for autographs and pictures of fans? This is you, not me. I don't get asked autographs. So you do. You no, do. I don't. People、I'm、recognize ne- you、no. as the beef. No, people don't recognize me. They don't know who I am, and I like to keep it.、Uh, 
I don't. I don't. It's very difficult. Okay, understand something. Uh, you know this. Yes, I, I, I never started doing the videos here because I was looking for some sort of fame. No, no. Um, he he did it to help out a friend at the because time because they needed because they needed a, a video person because the person who did it before me uh, was moving on to bigger and better things. Yeah. And so because I shopped at the at the store, I was just because my background was in theater. They asked me to help. I said sure thing. Let's let's try it for a couple couple videos. And then it just kind of. You know, kind of went from there, but at no time do I ever feel like I, like I'm an icon. I I do what I love and I enjoy filming videos. And the fact that that you guys it seems have uh, you, you know somewhat of a connection with me yeah, is great. But you enjoy mostly the things like this show or your yeah. Matt's mind or our funny videos when we get an opportunity to do that versus just like the reviews. I mean, the reviews are are necessary. Yes. But um, at the same time, we really do enjoy our, our fun time videos. Well, and, and that's the other thing to remember is that at the, at the very end of the day, we're still a retailer. Uh, so we have to do reviews because that's that's what our business is. Well, and we, so bringing we, products we to you guys sure through that reviews when, is kind when of how the products we... come out. It's a very unique, it's a very unique world with Airsoft because there are a lot more reviews of things than other places, you know, for like electronics. I mean, reviews are almost on every website, written True. reviews and stuff like that. And the market's bigger and, and all and that And we stuff. do our best to give... A reasonably balanced and uh, yeah, everything is an exciting way of presenting them. I think I think we're getting into too much. We're good. Okay. Um, was it? Eh, whatever. I love signing autographs. <laughs> he gets. Uh, there's nothing funnier than when he's just like walking around the mall and like some kid comes up to it. Oh my god, you're Hugh McMahon. No, no, no. That's not that bad. I li I enjoy that because I like talking to people. Okay, what is, is awkward <laughs> is when I'm shopping for something at Harbor Freight of all places. And I'm looking for a tool. Some guy stops me. He's like, "Excuse me." And I was like, "I don't. I don't work. I don't not. I'm not. I don't work here." And he's like, "No, no. Can I ask you a question? How's the Chris?" And I was just like, "Ah, oh, no." <laughs> See, I'm glad I'm not famous at all. I'll never I'm not be famous. famous. It's not, okay. it's not the same. Okay, CRQ5508. When you guys go to events in other states, how do you travel? If you fly or take other public transportation, how do you carry your equipment? Do you have to alert the airlines ahead of time? Okay, I can explain this really well because yeah. I know a lot. George about. does a lot of uh, <clears throat> traveling with, with firearms. It's actually a lot easier than you might think. First is there's two, pe two people do it two different ways. I'll explain the two different ways. One, technically you don't, if, you, if you're going to bring your, we're talking about your gun right now, you want a hard case for it, you have to have a hard case for it, and it has to be, you probably want to lock it. Now, there are two ways to, sh to bring this to the airport. You can either, one, just keep it in the Pelican case, and you can chip it through, and they're going to look at it, obviously, when it goes through x-ray, mm -hmm. but because it's not a real firearm, you don't have to claim it as a real firearm. But you don't run into any issues? No, no, this, this, the issue with this, though is TSA can knowingly just whatever, look at your case, they can cut your bolt, your, your locks if you have locks, and they can just do whatever. They can technically, okay. anything can happen to that. And also, because you didn't claim it, it can go right down to the um, S, the where you pick up standard baggage claim, yeah. and anybody could walk away with it. Uh -huh. So that's the that's the one way. Some people do it that way. I do not suggest it, okay. but you could. The way I do it is I claim it as a real firearm. Interesting. Now, it doesn't cost you any extra money, usually, for most airlines, at okay. least the ones I've traveled with. Um, you have it in a Pelican case. You have to have locks for it. You have the keys for those locks. TSA does not have these keys. So you use standard locks that you have. Oh, so like a master lock. So, yeah, you claim it. They'll ask you to open the case. They'll sometimes, like, swab it for, like, the... Gunshot yeah, residue. Or not, no, or not gunshot residue. Make sure you have no they'll, rounds they'll in make it. sure that, like, do you have any... They'll first... Sometimes they'll realize it's airsoft, depending on the airport, and they'll just go through with it. They'll just ask, do you have any ammo with it? You say no. Um, you're just very calm about it. And then after they look at it, they, you will lock it up with your key. Then you'll be asked to just sit really quick, like sit tight, like 10 minutes. They'll run it through x-ray and they'll let you know when you're all good. Okay. Or if they need to look at it, they'll ask you for your keys. So that's a situation where you'd want to show up early. Yes, uh, make sure you show point. up early. Okay, so now that, question though okay, for oh, you about that. Okay. Uh, let's say that you're not an adult. You're a minor and you're traveling to an airsoft gun, a game with some adults or a parent. Then the, then the adult has to claim it. Right. So that yes. wouldn't be a situation where you could claim it as a real firearm yourself. You'd have to have an if, adult do that? Yes, you'd have to have an adult do that because it's illegal for a kid to have a, a, right. a so, firearm. Yeah. So, and then when you get to your destination, um, you will... Your bag will not your your Pelican case or whatever case you have will not come down the baggage claim standard. You have to go to the office. Oh, they'll ask you for your identification. You show it to them, and then they'll be like, "Okay, this is your and, your and then you just walk off with it. The advantage to this is, and this is the way I suggest this, because you have complete control over your airsoft gun. You have the lock. You have the keys. True. No one can mess with it once you know they're not going to cut your locks or anything like that. Now, as for your gear, put all your other gear 
in like a big loadout bag, whatever, you know, there's several magazines included. <laughs> Magazines included are usually fine. Um, I usually bring put my batteries with the gun. Sure. Um, that way they're in a hard case because you don't want like a lipo battery like hitting something and breaking it half. Inflate. That could be very bad. Uh, well, now there is some. Don't bring your light poly too, bag right? or don't bring your light poly batteries on with you. Uh, not in your carry on. On your carry on, that is considered. Um, I got in trouble this one time because I had a whole bunch of double A batteries. This is when I was much younger, yeah. uh, and I had like electrical taped them together, and I got searched because <laughs> they're like, "What the hell is this?" But I just didn't want them to be loose, so I electric. Well, that's pretty creative. But it did not. It did not look. Yeah. Appropriate, but uh, um, but there is a, sort of a third option, right? You could always ship your stuff. I don't. You have to ship it way some early. Some people though. do this, yeah. and actually, we we know some people who have done this. Shipping things, I actually, if I can, um, for for Irene, for example, I shipped a box ahead of time. Yeah. But I shipped it full of non-essentials. I shipped it full of our raffle Thunder items. Bees, gas, uh, bees. Yeah. Well, Thunder Bees uh, turned out to be completely worthless anyway. But BBs, oh, yeah. BBs take a lot of weight. Yeah. And um, one thing you have to be conscious of is what I found out. My my loadout bag was thirty pounds. Yeah. Too heavy for the airport. Yours Mine was wasn't. Just, yeah, yours wasn't, but you have a small end. And so I realized that I brought too much stuff. I was kind of over-preparing. So you maybe should have shipped more. I should have shipped more, yes. But next time I'm going to, I'm going to use my smaller loadout bag. Um, and I'll, Which forces you to bring less stuff. Yeah, which forces you to bring less stuff. All right, growing another question here. Okay. Uh, Mad Blazer 89. Mad Old Blazer. school question. Are FPS versus rate of fire. I'm not asking which one is better, but what do you guys prefer? Yorgums? Um, FPS within the limit? That's the thing. <laughs> that, this question, I, like from an old school point of view, I mean, sure, back in the day, I would have preferred rate of fire all day, every day, because I played <laughs> indoor anyway, and the cap was always 350. Yeah. Uh, but now, all fields, for the most part, in our area, yeah. I can't. I can't speak for the rest of the world because my friend just went to the Philippines, and apparently, their fields like they, their their cap indoor or outdoor is like 500 FPS, That's and they have no be. rate cap. Uh, but locally, for us anyway, um, there's always an FPS cap, and there's certainly now a rate of fire cap. So that question is kind of irrelevant now. But had it been a couple of years ago, I would have said rate of fire all day, every day. Indoors, rate of fire. Yep. Lay down, but, suppressive fire. Yeah, but yeah. Sorry, we couldn't be more in depth. That was okay. We have Next team question. team Raptor Airsoft. Situ yes, sir. Salutations, Evic <laughs> YouTube representatives. Why aren't there any rifled airsoft barrels, or are there? There are not. Ha ha! Actually, uh, I'd like one? to bring up one thing, if I could please, a little bit old school, bringing up the Tanio Koba Hop Twist Barrel. Now, the Tanio Koba Hop Twist <laughs> Barrel is a barrel that existed uh, quite a few years ago. They were very, very hard to find out. I'm not even sure if TK still makes them. But it was the first time, I think, uh, that an airsoft company uh, developed a twisted barrel with rifling. Here's the thing. Uh, why guns have rifled barrels is because you're shooting a cylindrical object. It's the same theory as throwing a football. Football is more stable when you throw it and it spins, right? You guys yes. see when you have a, t a terrible football throw and it just kind of wobbles about. <laughs> well, the same thing happens with a bullet that's going through a barrel that isn't rifled. Right. Without spinning, it wobbles. It isn't as accurate. won't go as far. Now, when you add rifling, that puts a football spin on it, increasing accuracy and distance of travel. Now, that works because it's a cylinder. It has something to rotate around. In a BB, a BB spinning sideways is only going to either turn it either way or have almost no effect. Yeah. So in, th in, in essence, what the hop-up does is put spin the same way rifling would. And the difference is that it's spinning it backwards, which gives it loft. Yeah. <clears throat> So what, you're, what you'd actually be seeing in a barrel is as the BB tra passes, let's say that this is your hop-up nub right here. So your BB's coming in through here, and it goes boop and puts backspin on it. The same way that when you throw a basketball, you put a little backspin to give it a little bit more loft. That keeps it elevated for a straighter plane uh, along the arc of travel. Boom. Tanya Koba hop twist barrels. Look them up. They're old school. I still have one. It I sucks. Need, I don't even need to answer. You Sorry. Just, yeah, they're... They're pointless. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> I just got... I just learned something. I didn't even know such a product ever existed. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do we got here? Uh, exactical. 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 Exactical tactical. Uh, what is a piston? How... What happens when it strips? How hard is it to replace a piston? Um, it, what is a piston? A piston is... is it drives... Mm -hmm. Actually, if you... I mean, 
I'll put one on the screen here. Whoop, yeah, the screen. <laughs> Diagram. Right. So it gets pulled back via the gear. The sector gear. The sector gear. Um, and it basically, the purpose of it is to pull the air chamber back to allow air and push it forward, which pushes your BB forward. Yep. Now, how does it strip? Stripping can be done two ways mm -hmm. with how it, either a malfunction, meaning like you could have bad shimming, you could have uh, a, surge some, in the battery. a surge in the battery, or you could have um, a stress point get weak because of, uh, of too much use. Yeah, Pre-engagement. Pre-engagement. You could have a whole bunch of different things that can make the piston mm -hmm. get weaker. And then you have standard wear and tear, which is just to just wears right. out, especially a, a plastic, or not plastic, but a polycarb. Uh, yeah, well, especially when you're using real stiff springs. Yeah, and, and I would much rather have a, pol uh, I don't like metal uh, full teeth pistons, because if you have expensive gears and you have a piston, I'd much rather have a $20 piston break than, or $80 than an $80 dollars Prometheus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, okay, he's so, broken some promies. So airsoft gun <clears throat> gearboxes at their core, oh, okay, airsoft guns, period are air rifles. Yes. Regardless of whether they use gas or BB as the motor that drives the gas system. Yes. Uh, a piston is part of a system that creates air pressure that pushes the BB. To, like I just explained. Right, right. So 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 the the reason the reason you use a piston that is of a stiffer plastic is because of the spring tension, it depends a lot on the. It, it, like for example, a metal piston has a is necessary for high FPS builds. Right. But then again, you're not running it as fast, and also if you're building a high FPS build, you need to have that technical aspect to know this shimming is perfect. Plus, it's also worth understanding that you know that's the piston because they they tend to be soft. It, it's the weak link in the system. So if yes. there is a problem, I'd rather blow a twenty dollar part than yes. a set of gears. Yes. And that's the point you were bringing up yes. about if you go with a really hard piston, you may be sacrificing the durability of the other components in the gearbox because it's not a sacrificial part. And are they easy to replace? They are pretty easy to replace. If like you're using a gun, let's say you're using it for two years, and then they just you hear that sound. It's probably actually really easy to replace because you probably don't have an issue with your shimming. Mm -hmm. You probably don't have it. I mean, you could just get a standard piston, open your gearbox, replace that, close it up, and you should have no issues. You well, know, as long as you clean out the, you do. Have you to have clean to clean out, out all the all the shards because I mean, shards will cause break even more damage. Even more damage. So, but all right, yeah, that was a that was a long question. <clears throat> Giggity, Joel Cameron. <laughs> Hey, Evic, what do you guys think of melee weapons in Airsoft or melee weapons riot shield combo? Hey, yeah! Well, uh, melee weapon and riot shield wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense because <laughs> then you have no ranged attacks. Well, I, I, we still want to do that video. Oh, that's uh, a testudo. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we do want to take a bunch of shields out and have some fun. But that said, that's more for entertainment. I think... I think Melee that, weapons. I don't, I don't personally like melee weapons at all. I think... I don't know. There's a Matt's mind either before or after this video, depending yes. on when this one gets uploaded. Probably today. before. I shot it today. Uh, where I talk about the seriousness in airsoft and whether you should be, you know, taking yeah. it extremely seriously or having fun. I think melee weapons on the airsoft field are a way to have fun. They should never be used as a prime. I mean, well, I suppose you could, but yeah. it's kind of it, one of those last last ditch efforts or one of those things that you just kind of do out of entertainment to. Just keep yourself and maybe to have a challenge or something like that, but to yeah. have some fun. Then there are the the times where it's a, maybe a very serious game where you running around running at with, somebody to get a knife kill yeah, is with running around with a lightsaber in a uh, <laughs> Sith cloak. That could be an issue. <laughs> that was pretty funny. All right. I like melee weapons. I think they're cool. I don't use them just because I, I, I never have time. I think it's just more a crap to carry on you. Air Jumper 123. What is the brand model of the Helm of Reasoning? And can Shade style my hair so I can get all them ladies? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I was told about this epic question. I, I knew about the, the, the ladies comment. Okay, so uh, brand and model. Uh, I think it's just a Mitch 2002 uh, Matrix helmet. Uh, this is one of the marketing ones. It has mm -hmm. the GoPro mount on the front. We just kind of leave it in here, and it just kind of became the helm of reasoning. The reason we don't use this one is because it's kind of hefty. I mean, the fast helmets are so much lighter and easier to use. Speaking of fast helmets, uh, George brought in his helmet. I don't, I don't know, know if why I put it there. That. Yeah, I just put it. You want to show it real quick just no, so you can see it, it, the cool helmet? Yeah, this is my Come on, show it. This is my Ops Corps uh, fast helmet, uh -huh. and it's uh, it's... It's comfy. It's the real one. And it's got a custom paint job. Yeah, I painted it. It was originally a uh, AOR one. And, and you got lights all over it and stuff. Yeah, it was. Remember, all I had to talk about that video that we were. Is that what about. these are for? Yes. 
Those rubber bands are for the night vision? Well, they're for the, the rhino mount, yes. I, I've learned something new today. I always thought those were there to put dead bags in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's really not much of a use. I mean, you don't have to. I don't know. I just put them up there to hold the rhino mount. Yeah, really. cool. Okay, anyway. that works. Okay. Uh, and then I uh, can shade style your hair that, so you can get all damn lady. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure he could style your hair, but will he? Probably not. It's a trade secret of shades, what conditioning products he uses. And I don't think he'll be interested in uh, filling anybody in on what products those are. Yeah, he has the best hair in the department for sure. No, no, just leave it. You, just you, let it happen. You, uh, you Next question! I'm going to have to pick that up later. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, MRT Productions 10. Dear Evic, should I discharge my battery when not in use? Depends on the battery. Depends on the battery. Uh, if you guys are familiar no. with old Tyco RC cars yeah. and kind of the first batteries that were popular when Airsoft okay, okay, let's just, let's, started, <laughs> NICAD batteries need to be discharged. Yes. Uh, nickel cadmium batteries are the ones that say and NICD. And those aren't really used much anymore. They're right. usually the the batteries that are included with your like just standard gun. I don't even think um, anymore. Not even maybe metal. anymore. Maybe like yeah. the uh, LPAG stuff. Right. So I would um, maybe... Those need to be discharged because they develop a memory. And so as yeah. you let them sit, uh, they think that the point they're at is their discharge, their lowest point. Yeah. So when you recharge them, they, they keep decreasing in life. And as for light polys, you actually want to keep them charged. Yes. And you don't want to leave them for too long not being used so you want to make sure that you charge them regularly so if you don't have an event from uh, you have a three month gap make sure you look at your battery it's like once a month maybe just put them on the charger I think really they dis quick discharge it like so many percent a month or so many percent yeah. a day or yeah but like you that. don't if, if it gets really down you it technically is somewhat of a fire hazard i've never seen one discharge and be I keep mine in an ammo can. yeah i know i keep mine in an ammo can as well and uh they just won't work anymore mm -hmm. so and nickel metals they don't develop mm -hmm. a uh, a memory so you can just leave them however you want yeah <laughs> Also, uh, probably you notice right now, we're actually going to be answering a few more questions, so we can get this episode will be a little long. But, really? Uh, Are we? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do some more. Cool. So, uh, going along. I'm we, just we, being, we, I'm we gotta, out right we now. Gotta, we got to play catch up a little bit. <laughs> the last question, I'll just, I'm already throwing it out there. Okay. okay. Luker Zvich. Luker Zvich. <laughs> can, you get, can you get sponsored by Evic, and if so, how? Also, people in the UK get sponsored by you guys. Uh, we really don't have sponsorships from other countries. Normally. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, don't we, count yourselves out. You know, it's it's one of those things you could always kind of hit us up, and and depending on on what we're doing right now with our budget in terms of how many teams we sponsor and all that stuff. You know, what a lot of people don't realize thing. is there's a sponsorship section on our website at evic.com yes. that you can go to find out all the information that you guys ask about uh, what it takes to be uh, sponsored, kind of the requirements, and how to submit your application. To and get you sponsored. Can and if you submit and oh, you don't sorry. hear any, if you submit your application, you don't hear anything. Sadly, you are not chosen to be sponsored. We should probably give him like a sorry, man. Not today. Considering That's kind considering of how many marketing emails we get on a daily basis, That's I don't true. know if that is possible. We can't we'd sponsor have, everybody. We'd have to hire your. Company. I wish we could. We I really, I really, really wish we could. Yeah. That's how we make SB ninety nine and one ninety nine go away. We make airsoft free for everyone. Next question. I can't. Otis Williams <laughs> asks, "How do you feel about riot shields? I know you guys have riot shields, but how do you feel about them in CQB?" I never seen him. In What's CQB. going on here? Why do we have two of the same? Whatever. Oh, okay. Oh uh, no, no. I, I remember like there was one. Uh, I think Jet did it at Desert Fox, uh, Gar not Gardenia, but the other one. Okay. Uh, when it was around, and he would basically have a a mission where you have the riot shield, and you had to like enter a room and take uh take a friend uh, one of the dummy dummies yes. and then bring them to the other side. So you would use that, but you could only use a pistol, and you were like the front person, just kind of like in. I think I think riot shields are cool. I think if you use them in game for like a hostage rescue or something where you can use I think if they're part of the scenario, yeah. yes. If you just bring them out to a random pickup game yeah. and you're just like, look, I'm invincible, yeah. then you're kind of yeah. a jerk. I think putting lights on a riot shield would be super cool too. Just yeah, saying. I, think, like, I think modifying one. Even is. those ones that you need, those Home Depot lights that you can get that yeah. are like battery powered, yeah. that you can just click them on. Yeah. Put two of those on the front of our riot shield and just like <laughs> turn, turn them on and go around inside. Well, night I games. think it would be cool. I, mean, I haven't seen one. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen one, but a, uh, a fake looking, but at least looks real like a real ballistic shield i think would make it where you just have the porthole that, that would be a fair you know, disadvantage and that's and then you just have that's it you just have that porthole right. i think that would at least be more realistic because you, you don't have all you this. don't have the space whereas like the one you could like you just like Ooh, i can yeah. look at you know I also know. i think weight it should yes it should weigh more way more just i think because that. it should be more difficult to wield yeah 
I think that if you, you had it that way, then I think it's a lot more realistic, basic balanced. Pick another question. Me? Yeah, I, really, uh, I, I had two in a row. You can have giggity. Giggity, giggity. Moving, moving, moving. Okay, this question giggity. is almost gone. Uh, it's a long one. <laughs> Uh, MK Ultra Faction, Ultra Fiction, M Culture Fiction, Um Culture I Fiction, culture. Um Culture I Fiction. I'm sorry. Uh, greetings, gentlemen of the Nuts Around Table. As a paintballer switching to airsoft, the issue of FPS limits is confusing to me. Some fields cap FPS 300 across the board. Others limit FPS according to the type of gun and designate standoff distances accordingly. None of the fields in my state allow over 500 FPS. As experienced players, what are your opinions on the subject? Should, say, a 580 FPS sniper rifle be used? 580 FPS, I think, is a little excessive. I think 500 is is pretty. I think anything below, I think a f below 500 FPS sniper rifle is a pretty still a good sniper rifle, especially if you use a heavy BB. Here's here's how but, uh, I anything above that I think is a little could be dangerous. Here's here's how I take this situation. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the the assumption that all people will behave appropriately when given power is an incorrect assumption. For example, if we gave everybody a thousand horsepower car, you'd get some people that still followed the speed limit, and you get some people who broke the speed limit. Then you have to regulate everybody because of the people who don't follow the speed limit. Yes. So no one can have a thousand horsepower car. Yeah. Makes sense? Because you have to be able to keep everybody safe, yeah. not just the people who drive safe. So even if you're responsible, right. I mean, um, so when you So in the same these... way, you know, fields will decide what they think is appropriate yeah. uh, to keep everybody safe and to make sure that everybody is, in, responsible. In, is responsible, regardless of how you behave, uh, or regardless how, of how mature and responsible you are, that same can't be said for every airsofter on that field. So it's a way of the, the field making sure that everybody stays safe and responsible um, with having, without having to go on a case-by-case -case basis. When fields regulate different you know, FPSs, like sometimes they do it for on based on the average engagement distance. So for example, the CQB field out here, 350 is usually the highest because the, the engagements are mostly between 10, 5 feet yeah. and 20 feet versus an outdoor field could be much greater. So they, they increase the FPS based on that. Usually as an AEG, FPS-wise, I think across the whole country, I don't think anybody is over 400 when it comes to um, for AEGs, for an AEG for, that, for can shoot, rifles, sh that can shoot full auto. Yeah. So I think that's pretty pretty standard, you know. I think for the most part, too, when you get over 400, I mean, they're reaching the end of most fields anyway. At 450, yeah. almost 500 FPS, you're able to reach out and touch people. Farther than anybody else anyway. So anything over that maybe is overkill? Yeah, I think a little bit overkill. And as we've discussed before, FPS doesn't necessarily reflect range. accuracy and range. More range, yeah. yeah. That's all based on your hop-up. Sorry about cutting you It's off. okay. I apologize. I, I, my I've got lots <laughs> of energy. I don't know what I'm doing. It's all right. Sammy Dang. Shaka's from Hawaii. What's up, bro? <laughs> uh, I was wondering what made you get into Airsoft and how did you learn so much about it? I think we learned. All right, let's. Oh, all right. First, how did you get into Airsoft? Me? Yes. I got shot. Okay, you got shot. Yeah. I got My an friend on, on his street, totally yeah. illegal. He was like, <laughs> dude, he was just like, dude, check this out. And I was like, what is this fantastic contraption? He was like, this is a Tokyo Marui MP5. Isn't it the coolest thing ever? I had no idea what that meant. I was like, that looks fantastic. How does it work? And he was like, go down over there. I'll show you. No, I, bro. <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, watch, watch, watch these things come by. And I was like, okay, got it. I'm standing down there. I hear zit, 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 and whack right in the neck. I'm down <laughs> on the ground choking. What the hell? And that that is how I got into Airsoft. Wow. How about you? Uh, my friend Todd went here. Um a long time ago with a producer on the studio I was working at at the time. And uh, just for clarification, I used to work in video games. So that's where I was, what I was doing. Gotcha. Um, so a producer and a friend, uh, an IT friend of mine went to here to just look at it. And he came back with this like custom KWA gun. It was all tricked out and everything. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. And then we were talking and I, I used to play paintball a long time ago when I was in high school. So I kind of knew about that aspect. I'm like, this like isn't like those little plastic things in the bit, you know, in big five and stuff. This is actually pretty cool. This mm -hmm. is like my old uh, AR. Like this is realistic. I'm like, I'm going to go try this. So I came to the store and I left with a bag and a big credit card <laughs> bill and, uh, well, and an explanation, and an explanation from there. And then uh, obviously me and my friend Todd are uh, still playing together. 
uh, and I've been playing for a while. And how do we get so knowledgeable? By working and being in Airsoft for so long. I think you just kind of pick up and learn things. I think you and I are both really curious people, and we like to tinker with things. Yeah. And so that's part of it, too. Like, personality-wise, we both like to, to tinker and, and just fiddle with stuff. To break things. Yeah. <laughs> and so through that, we end up having to fix things. And so you kind of learn how they work because yeah. you – took it apart in the first place. And I think working here also, yeah. you have to be knowledgeable. So. And thankfully, we were both picked up by teams that were fairly knowledgeable as well when we were yeah. getting into Airsoft, and they taught us a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> Moving on up. Moving on up. Peter O'Brien. I have heard BioBBs degrade just by being exposed to air. How do how long do BioBBs take to down or degrade in the environment? That's part of the first question. Question two is, if I don't seal my bio bag, will they degrade before they are used? Do you, And then three, do you find the outdoor locations require bio BBs over non-bio BBs? You know what, Peter? That's a good question. I've actually been wondering that myself, to be honest. Yes. Uh, I came across a bag that I had in my, my 511, or no, my Condor, you know that range okay, bag? Yeah, okay. So I had a bag of two fives, and they were bios, and I don't know how old they were, um, but I had opened them at some point, and I had reclosed them. And I ran. I, I was trying. I was running that bag of BBs uh, in indoors at a pistol game, yeah. and my gun kept jamming. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know why it was jamming. Because uh, I switched BBs to a fresh bag that I bought like a week ago, no problems. Yeah. So some point between whenever I used it last, which may have been a year or two ago, to now, something happened to those BBs that they weren't. It depends on a few factors, and I have a lot of experience with bio BBs uh, because of the, I mean, most of the events I've run are all bio BBs. So I've learned okay. over time that a fully sealed bag is going to be your best option for fresh BBs. If you have ones from an old event that have been exposed to air, I do not recommend them. They could jam your barrel, depending on what kind of barrel you have, if you have like a tighter bore barrel. This is a um, and also they do not shoot as well. If okay. they're older. Um, so as a rule of thumb, I usually, if for an event, I like to pull fresh BBs. And uh, was, how long do they take? It's, it all depends on the BBs. Some take longer than others. It depends on the environment. If, if you're in a drier environment, it takes it could take less or more time or versus a humid environment plus heat cold i don't know there's a whole bunch of other factors i don't know how you'd play I've with never bios in south america I have, I have never personally seen bios like i never seen one like months later of like looking at it. i've never no. seen that so i usually just see the bbs there and then like sometimes i'll go back and there's no bbs there. but it is noticeable enough that we have seen them jam <clears throat> after yes. being exposed I've, to the elements for a while i have definitely seen them jam also don't <clears throat> reuse bbs if you find bbs on the floor never don't put them in your gun even if they're not bios it's well, just you, the dirt and the shit no you can use them if you want to put them in a um, maybe uh, M203 show, show or something like but that but not in a gun yeah not in a gun ever mm-hmm. okay right. we'll do one more question alright last question here we go we answered quite a few I think we're, yeah, we're, going, we're doing a good stack today the 11th hour airsoft hey yes. guys my question for you is would be making your mags dual mags be worth it some say it's worth it as it as for in you know fast reloads you know the dual mags like the clamp that, yeah the uh, clamp okay. thing uh-huh. but i believe it takes um uh the same t- amount of time to pull another mag and reload <clears throat> uh... i disagree i think that if you have i've i've seen um uh, one of my teammates has all dual mags mm-hmm. for his ak and it is a lot quicker of a motion to unclick reclick than unclick dump pouch or floor depending on what you do Pull mag, reclip. There is definitely, you know, definitely reclick in. Yeah. It is definitely longer. I don't care what, it doesn't matter how fast of a reloader you I are. Think, I think that also <clears throat> depends on your reloading technique, though, because uh, generally the guys that I used to play with, we were always taught to reload mag in hand. So you're firing, 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 already pulling a new mag. Oh, that is Eject, true. swap, and then dump so you don't lose that uh, is true. Your, your target. Um, so if you're doing that, I'd say that's just as quick as doing a, a, a combined mag. The the thing that I'm worried about is storage. It's already hard enough to find yeah. uh, good storage options for most, uh, you know, AK. Well, not really AK, but like uh, you know, G36 mags yeah, or I mean, Sig mags. Uh, Leonard runs them uh, two AK mags in a uh, I think like a tactical tailor pouch that, that normally holds three M4 mags, so it's a pretty wide pouch. Okay, so. Um, but he likes them because he switches them. Some people like it. Some people don't. I yeah. personally don't like it because I don't like the extra weight. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like the G36 Max because of how wide they end yeah. up getting. And plus, uh, I'm 
like you said, you could reload that way if you have your own personal air. I mean, I just, um, I've been shooting since I was so young that I kind of just have it embedded to me sure. of how I, I go the proper about. way to I, reload. <laughs> yeah. You not know, my I'm way. I'm not going to be like, when my, <laughs> when my real AR go like, hey, I got to reload. I'm going to keep shooting, keep yeah. shooting. <laughs> okay, sorry. Great advice from Matt. Great advice yeah. from Matt. All so right, is that guys. our last? I th- do you want to do one more? We, all right, let's do one more. One more? Yeah. Okay, more. really, yeah, really last question this time. I Actual know. last question. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. This one's from Pringlesman4. Great name. <laughs> Reliability versus performance. Which is better? Also, what are the best ways to make a high-performing a performing gun more reliable? That's a classic. That's an age-old question. Performance versus reliability. Reliability. Back in the day, you, you had to look at it like a triangle, right? You have speed... You have uh, power and you have reliability. And generally, you can only have two of, of three back in the day. So you could either have speed and reliability, or power and reliability, or speed and power. Yes. But you wouldn't have reliability. Well, so you had you know two of the yeah. three. It's kind of like um, that old saying of the cheap, fast, or uh, cheap, fast, or quality. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, Reliability, I'd say, unless you really like going out and breaking your gun every weekend, reliability, reliability. is the best oh, the, thing. You know, if and if 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 it's a good gun it'll last a long time any or it'll it'll perform well anyway but the quality of parts now yeah i mean there's really no you could get almost ha- almost a little bit of all three in that triangle yeah but it's the same question of like a car like for example you can if you have a reliable car you probably don't have like a v10 uh, sports car yes. as your reliable car because I mean yes they're very nice cars but at the same time anybody who's owned a oh yeah the maintenance on any anybody who's owned a either a BMW <laughs> or a Porsche or a um, Ferrari, Ferrari or, a or a Lamborghini whoever or if you've known anybody ask them about how they achieve maintenance true and they That's will true. tell you well they <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like yeah well I mean you, so, so, I wish I had gotta, a Honda you, Civic you, you got to pay to play. If you want yeah, a high-performance gun, yeah, exactly. be prepared to have to maintain it and repair things often. Uh, one way to maybe make it more reliable <laughs> is don't push the extremes as much. I mean, with, with kind of the, the you culture don't now, you don't you're being limited FPS on rate of fire or, anyway. Yeah, you're limited um, on rate of fire and FPS anyway, so why don't you just play within the limits? And then you and maybe upgrade the parts that don't impact your um, that aspect of the gearbox Better hop up unit, better bucking, better hum, better anti reversal, better anti reversal, rapid play. Yeah, better just you know. <clears throat> yeah. All right, that was simple. Well, thanks again for joining us on insert. Insert. <laughs> the not so round table. Uh, join us uh, next, week. next week again. We'll be answering more questions. I think we knocked out quite a few today. So keep uh, keep plugging questions in in the comments section below, and uh, either George and I or George and I and guest will be, a guest we'll be answering. Oh, there will. Okay, maybe there will be a guest. probably probably. And we'll see you guys next time.